new post-war old Dutch cleanser, famous for chasing dirt, presents... Nick Carter, famous for chasing crime. Every week at this time, two great names are joined, as new post-war old Dutch cleanser brings you one of the most resourceful and daring characters in all detective fiction, Nick Carter, Master Detective. Matty, I want you to get hold of a delivery truck and two suits of overalls. Okay, Nick. Anything else? Yeah. Get enough grease to turn us into a couple of overworked truckmen. And then what? Then we've got half an hour to make the wrong delivery to the right party and prevent a murder. Now, the case of the bull and bear. Today's adventure starring Lon Clark as Nick Carter. Brought to you by new post-war old Dutch cleanser. Jeff Howe and Dodie Murray think they're a lucky couple. Just when they thought they'd never get the money to get married, old Sidney Poor, who owns a candy store in their rundown neighborhood, is breaking them into a racket that's going to make them rich. He keeps telling them... Now, uh, you understand. You walk into the department store. Dodie's got two $100 bills in her purse. Yeah, one's real money, and the other's counterfeit. Yeah, yeah, we got that. Yes, you, you buy something, a watch maybe, something in the jewelry line. Uh-huh. Dodie takes out the real $100 bill to pay for it. Yeah, Then and the what? clerk will have to have the bill checked by the floor manager. Uh-huh. Yeah, I know, uh, all stores do that, it's a rule. And you make a big fuss. Both of you, like, like you're being insulted because they don't trust you. You get that? Yeah. Uh-huh. But when the floor manager says the bill is okay, and for the clerk to go ahead and make the sale, you grab the bill back and you walk out like you're real mad. Well, what do we do after that? You wait about a half hour, then you go back. Make out like you're ashamed of yourself for losing your temper. Apologize. Say you'll buy the watch after all. Uh-huh. And this time, you pay for it with the counterfeit hundred. I get it. The clerk thinks it's the same bill the manager okay. That's right. He he won't check it again. He'd be glad to make the sale. So you walk out with the watch or whatever you bought, and you bring it back here. And bring back the change, too. Sure, it's a cinch. Well? Anything else now, Mr. Poor? This, this is the kind of a test. If it works out okay, I'll take you on regular. I like to give nice young folks a helping hand. Well, I... uh, I don't know. They're all very nice, madam. May I suggest... Uh, How much is that bracelet? Uh, The one with the red B. The ruby? Yeah. It's $290. Oh... Oh, well, uh, how about that one there? $98. That's the one for you, honey. Oh, okay, I, I'll i take it. Very good, madam. May I have your charge number? Oh, um, I'll, I'll pay cash. I just happen to have $100 with me. Uh, here, thank you. I'll... I... Well, what are you gawking at the bill for? We're not accustomed Mr. to having Robert. our honesty. Oh, Mr. Take... Roberts, jury counter, please, and hurry. Jeff. I think the manager, I think he's a detective. Stay right where you are. Come on, Dodie, run. Quick, I'm going. Oh, Mr. Roberts, stop that man. Look out. Anybody tries to stop me, me gets a bullet in the head. See <laughs> what I mean? Quick. All right, fellow, I'll take that gun. Why, you Come on, let me have it. Let go of me. That's more like it. Anybody hurt, Patsy? Yes, Nick. The store detective was shot. You hurt bad? Yes. Yes, he was. He's dead. All right, Nick. Now, see if I got this straight. Go ahead, Benny. Jeff Howe and a girl come into the store and try to buy a bracelet with a counterfeit $100 bill. Right. The clerk spots the phony and calls Roberts, the store detective. Right. Jeff Howe makes a break and Roberts chases him. The girl disappears and Howe kills Roberts. Wrong. What do you mean, wrong? I mean Howe didn't kill the detective. If he was doing the shooting. We know that, but he was shooting over his head to break up the crowd. Just the same, Patsy. He could have shot one bullet over his shoulder and drilled Roberts 
Roberts was only six or seven feet behind him. Yes, Matty, but Roberts was shot in the back. In the back? Yes, and he couldn't have been running backwards when he was chasing Howe. Holy smoke. You're telling me someone else shot Roberts? I am. But I have a hunch the killer was really shooting at Howe. Oh, but look, Nick... If I'm right, Matty, the shot that killed Roberts came from the door of the fire stairs. Come on, I'll show you. But what makes you think the shot came from there? I examined the wound, and I figured out the approximate angle the shot was fired from. Huh. Did anyone notice a shot from this direction? Not so far as I know. There was too much excitement in shooting. Huh. Incidentally, how did you and Nick happen to be here in the store? Why, uh, I was trying to buy a birthday present for a boy named Lucas. Huh? And Nick was very annoyed because I wouldn't tell him anything about Lucas. I was trying to make him jealous. <laughs> and oh, he... save it, Patsy. <laughs> here we are, Maddie. Oh, yeah. Now, the killer could have stood about here, just inside the emergency exit door. Yeah. The sound of the shot would have been swallowed up by the stairwell. The killer could have... What? Yes, by George, he did. What? Did what, Nick? Look there in the corner, right next to that piece of paper. What? What is it? It's an ejected cartridge from a forty-five automatic. Well, how about that? And Nick, that's not a piece of paper. It's a bill. Money. It's a... Oh, Chuck, no, it isn't either. Hey, let's see it. It's make-believe money, toy money from some game. Hmm. But it's a pretty good imitation in a rough sort of way. Yeah, probably from the toy department. Well, Matty? So Jeff Howe didn't kill Roberts. Right. Let's go to headquarters. I want to see if Howe can tell us who did kill him. What a crazy little dope. Scared she was. She pulled out the phony bill first. Who was she, Jeff? None of your business. Oh, tough guy, huh? Yeah. Look, Jeff, I know that routine. I've heard it a hundred times. I'm tough. I can take it. I don't squeal. Yeah, you said it. They all say it, but change their minds when they find out they're suckers. You're trying to be loyal, Jeff. Only trouble is no one's going to be loyal to you. Says you. Someone put you and the girl up to this racket, Jeff, and I want to know who it was. Yeah? Yeah, I've got to notify the Secret Service. I want to give them that information. It's too bad. You ain't gonna. Still loyal, huh? It's rather foolish, Jeff. Why? Because someone has tried to double-cross you already. Double-cross me? Yes, double-cross you. They didn't trust you. You and the girl were followed when you went to the store and were watched very carefully. When you got in that jam, someone tried to shut you up. With a bullet. What bullet? What are you talking about? A forty-five automatic slug. Meant for you. What? You didn't get that slug because the store detective got it. And he's dead. Is that on the level, Mr. Carter? Someone tried to plug me? I'm sure of it. Now look, Jeff. Eventually, you're going to be handed over to the Secret Service. Counterfeit money's their case. They've got you cold on that count. Yeah, yeah, but murder. But murder comes first, and murder's my business. So if you want to escape a murder rap, you've got to help me. Well, what do you want to know? A lot of things. Who put you up to this racket? Who supplied the phony money and the real bill? Who would want to shut you up for keeps? It's Sydney Poor. 1270 Grand Admiral. Mm-hmm. But don't tell him I told you. Now, don't worry, I won't. But I've got a few things I want him to tell me. He left me, Mr. Poor. He ran off and left me on my own. The dirty double-crossing no, heel. No, no, my dear. If I hadn't had good luck, I'd have been caught. He didn't even try to help me. No, he just no, ran out of duty. the place. No, Everything is going to be all right. You've got to... Shh. Someone just came into the shop. Hello? Anyone uh, minding the store? Coming, sir. Coming. Just resting my feet in the back for a moment. Hard on an old man's feet, keeping shop. Yes, sir. You, Mr. Poor? Sidney Poor? Yes, sir. What can I do for you? Uh, I'd like a dollar's worth of that candy. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's cold in here. Don't you have any heat? Uh, no, sir. Just the stove in the back. I haven't started it yet. Can't afford to, with the price of coal so high up. Poor is a poor man. <laughs> My favorite joke. Oops, careful with that tray. Hey, what's the matter with your hands? Oh, old age, sir. Just old age. Makes a man shake. 
Uh, will that be all, sir? Yeah, that's all. Well, here you are, sir. And many thanks. Come again. Thanks. Any luck, Nick? Yeah, here. I brought you some candy, Bessie. Well, where's poor? Still in the yeah. store. You didn't arrest him? Nope. Why not? He isn't the man we want. But Jeff said... Poor may be the man who started Jeff in the racket, but he isn't the killer. And I have a hunch he isn't the big boss counterfeiter either. What? Well, how do you know? Because he's an old man. His hands shake constantly. He couldn't shoot a gun with any accuracy at all. Oh, but how do you know he isn't the boss counterfeiter? Look, Patsy, if Poor is operating from that store, where's his plant? You need machine, storage space, room for a press. Maybe his plant's in the cellar. There's no cellar. He heats the store with a stove in the back. Oh. No, I have a strong hunch Poor is just the middleman, the agent who passes counterfeit money from the plant down to kids like Jeff. And if we want to find out who killed Roberts, we'll have to locate the plant and the man who runs it. That's right. He's the one who'd have most reason to cover Jeff or try to kill him to keep him from talking. Well, could we locate him through Poor? All depends on how smart we play it and how far we can play Poor. But I've got an idea. Yeah? What is it? Listen to this and tell me what you think. Crystal! Crystal! Open up! Who is it? It's me, Sidney Poor. Oh. You and your crazy ideas. How to cut you up and feed you to the lions at the zoo. Now, now, take it easy, Crystal. Take it easy. I just killed a man. You know what they hand out for murder in this state? But, Crystal, This I... was a nice, smooth business until you started getting ideas. Let's break new people in, you said. Smart young kids, you said. Make it easy for us, you said. But, Crystal, Oh, you I... certainly made it easy, all right. Now, who's going to be the next bright boy I have to kill to make it easy? That's what I came to tell you. Jeff isn't dead. But... You didn't what? hit him. You hit the store detective. You're, you're kidding. I'm not kidding, Crystal. And the man who caught Jeff was around to my store just now. <laughs> snooping, I guess. Don't he recognize him? Who is he? I, I don't know. He, he's a tall fella. About 6'1". Weighs maybe 190. Dark brown hair. Blue eyes that kind of look through you. About 35, I'd say. Uh, Nice-looking fella. Uh, looks like an athlete. Wait, did he have a soft hat pulled out in front? Yeah, that's him. Nick Carter. Nick Carter? Yes, you dope. I know he was in the store this morning. I saw him there. Well, I, I guess we better pull out. You can't buck Carter. I've got to. And I can. I'm smart, Sidney. And I'm already one step ahead of Carter. I don't see it, Crystal. He doesn't know I know he's looking for me. Maybe I'll let him find me. Yes. Yes, maybe I will. But, Crystal, I... You know, it's a funny thing, Sidney. The first murder's the hardest, and the rest come easy. And no matter how many times you kill, they can only send you to the chair once. Crystal Davis, young, beautiful, and hard, stares icily at Sidney Poor as plans to outwit Nick Carter race through her head. We'll see what she decides to do in just a moment. Now, back to The Case of the Bull and Bear. Today's adventure with Nick Carter. Brought to you by new post-war old Dutch cleanser. While Crystal Davis prepares for an all-out war to the finish, Nick is making plans of his own at police headquarters with Jeff Howe. Did you go after poor Mr. Carter? Yeah, Jeff, I did. But poor isn't the man I want. I want the man he's working for. And you're going to help me find him. I am? How? You're going to escape. But how? Patsy Bowen's going to help you. You and Patsy will head straight for Sidney Poor's candy store. She'll tell you our plan on the way. Yes, sir. And get this straight, Jeff. I went out on a limb to give you this chance. I had to do some hard talking to get Sergeant Matheson to agree. Yes. Yes, Mr. Carter. Now, this is your chance to come through. So don't let me down. And above all, don't let yourself down. Shut the door, babe. Okay. What are you doing here, Jeff? What happened? Who's this girl? I made a break, Mr. Poor. She helped. You got away? Yeah, yeah, but I wouldn't have if she didn't give me a hand. That's right. 
This here is Penny Blake. Good kid. Hi. But, but why did you come here, Jeff? I mean, what? You don't why? think I'm quitting the racket, do you? No, sirree. Me and Penny's gonna work together and act together. She's smart. Yeah, sure. Had to pull it off before if it wasn't for Dodie. Why, that crazy kid's the dumbest cluck I ever seen. You oh, know what yeah. she. Oh, Dodie! I, I heard didn't... every word you said, Jeff. Everything. So, this is your new girl, huh? Wanna make something out of it? She's just right for you, Jeff. A cheap little dame for a cheap little young Why don't you and... shut up? Shut up? Me? I'll show you. You. Hey. Well, who are you staring at? You. What's the matter with me? Mr. Poor. She. She's the girl that was with Nick Carter when he caught Jeff. And stay with that phone, Scubby. Patsy's due to check in any minute. I'm going down to headquarters to fight with Maddie. Good afternoon, Mr. Carter. I've been waiting for you. I beg your pardon. I thought this is my car. It is. Please get in. Well, thank you. I'm Crystal Davis. Charmed, Miss Davis. Uh, call me Crystal, please. Delighted, Crystal. Thank you. Nick, are you a gambler? Isn't everyone, one way or another? I suppose so. My favorite game is open poker. I like to see everyone's cards. I like them to see mine. You have some good cards to show, Crystal? I think so. I killed the store detective, Nick. What? You killed us. I killed him with the same gun I've got in my purse now. Well, is this a confession? No. I'm just showing my cards. You've already shown yours. Patsy Bowen. Oh? I've got her, Nick. I guess that, more or less. What's your proposition, Crystal? I want you to call off the war, Nick. Drop the case. Let me alone. But someone's got to take the rap for the murder. What's the matter with Jeff Howe? Jeff? Sure. Who cares about him? Pin it on Jeff, Nick. You can do it. Except that he'll talk. No, he won't. I'll arrange it so that you get him back, uh, dead. You will? Nick, if you'll promise me to drop the case, you get Patsy Bowen back. Otherwise? I see. Suppose I give you my word in one hour. No, Nick. Now. That's impossible. The whole homicide squad's working on this case. It'll take me an hour to pull him off. It'll take an hour to convince Maddie I was wrong about Jeff. You mean that? I do. All right, Nick. In one hour. It's a deal. I'll let the girl go in one hour. I have your word that you'll drop the case. In one hour, yes. You have my word. Nick, are you out of your mind? Why didn't you just pull Crystal in when you had her? Use your head, Maddie. She's holding Patsy a prisoner. If Crystal didn't get back to her hideout, Patsy'd be killed. Ah, you're right there. Well, what do we do now? After Crystal left me, I found this key on the floor of my car. She must have dropped it. A key? Let me see it. Here. Ah, hotel key from the old Kettle Inn. Nick, now we got something. Any idea where this old Kettle Inn is? Yeah, yeah, it's North Barton, about 50 miles from here. I've been past it a couple of times. Well, what are we waiting for? I'll get my car No, 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 hold it, Matty, hold it. Do you think Crystal's fool enough to drop a hotel key accidentally in my car right where I could find it? Oh, then you think it's a plan? Of course I do. She hoped we'd do just what you started to do, dash up there to try to locate her. Yeah, I see what you mean. It's a trap. She wanted to gain time so she could clean up her business and get out of town. She wanted to let me know she was holding Patsy as a hostage. Yeah, and maybe Patsy ain't safe even with that deal you made with Crystal. Yeah, that's what I'm afraid of, Maddie. No crook would ever trust anybody as much as Crystal says she trusts me, which means we've got to locate her hideout and fast. Yeah, but where is she? Well, let's use our heads. Suppose we were in the counterfeiting racket. Yeah, sure. What's but, our but... problem? First, we need a hideout, a place where we can run a printing press without drawing attention to ourselves. Yeah, a printing plant would do the trick. Yeah, but what do we do with print? What do we print? We've got to be in a position to buy paper and ink of high enough quality to use for counterfeiting money. Oh, there you got me. And our next problem, the distribution of the money. How do we send it out to men like Sidney Poor all over the country? How do we get it to the middlemen who hire the crooks who pass it? Uh-huh. Maybe. Uh, hey. What's the matter? The toy money. What? 
The crumbled bill of toy money Patsy picked up. It was lying next to the ejected cartridge shell in the store. Well, what about that? Don't you understand, Mary? It was a pretty fair imitation of real money. So real, it fooled Patsy at a distance. That satisfies the conditions. Holy smoke, Nick, you got it. You have a plant that makes a game using toy money. Probably a very expensive game because the toy money looks so real. That's your excuse for buying high-quality paper and ink. Yeah, but I never saw a game that used toy money that looked that good. Oh, I doubt whether many people have, Matty. And if I'm right, I don't believe the manufacturer cares if nobody buys it. Nick, that's it. That's how you distribute the counterfeit money to middlemen. You send them a dozen boxes of the game with the counterfeit money hidden under the toy money. And no one would ever notice it. Right, Matty. Here, let me have that phone. Yes, sure, here. Maybe when Crystal pulled the gun out of her purse, that toy money came out, too. Maybe she manufactures this game for a cover-up. Yeah, could be, could be. Yeah. Hello? Croydon Department Store? Let me speak to the buyer in the toy department, please. What are you doing now, Nick? Now, just a minute, you find... Hello? Can you tell me whether you stock a game using toy money that looks very much like real money, except that the president's face on the bill is changed to a joker? Uh-huh. Bull and bear, I see. A Wall Street game, speculation in the toy exchange. Yeah. Now, tell me, is that the only game using that kind of toy money? It is, good. Can you tell me the manufacturer who supplies bull and bear? This is very urgent. Uh, you got something, Nick? I think so. Adult Games Company, 25 Archer Street. Thank you very much. Adult Games Company. You think that's Crystal's outfit, Nick? I hope so. What time is it? Uh, almost 5.30. All right, let's go. I've got a little over half an hour to show Crystal how I play poker. Nick and Matty rush from the room, wondering whether Nick's deduction is right, wondering whether they'll find Patsy and Crystal Davis at the home of Bull and Bear. We'll see what happens in just a moment. And now for the conclusion of The Case of the Bull and Bear, today's adventure with Nick Carter, brought to you by new post-war old Dutch cleanser. In a dimly lit plant on Archer Street, the presses that turn out toy money for Bull and Bear games and counterfeit money for cheating Uncle Sam make an ominous background for the five people who sit and wait. Sydney. Yes, Crystal? What time is it? Five of six. All right. Got the first mic. Okay, Crystal. All right, Miss Bowen. Time to get ready to leave. That goes for you and Dodie, Jeff. Now, look, Crystal, we don't like this. You don't like what? I mean, the boys, we don't like to deal with Carter. How do we know he keeps his word? Who cares if he keeps his word? Nick, oh, he keeps his word. But I thought you trusted him. The whole deal was a stall, honey. I wanted to get us time to finish up and get out of here. I gotta hand it to you, Crystal. Now that the last batch of phony dough is finished, we blow town. Yeah, but what about the girl? What do you think? They can only hang you once. You're, you're going to... Yes, honey. You and Jeff and this dumb girlfriend of his. Three bullets. Oh, no. Oh, you can't do that. We had nothing oh, to do with this. Mike, get the car. We'll take them over the river. Okay. The rest of you get that money packed and get ready to... Hey, Crystal, open up. Who's that? I don't know. Come on, come on, open look, up. Look, nobody makes a break. I can shoot this gun fast and straight. Now stay put. Okay? Open the door, Sidney. Come on, come on, will you? Look, I got my truck here. Three dozen bales from Consolidated. Wait a minute. I didn't place any order with Consolidated. All right, Crystal, drop that gun. Drop it. Nick, no tricks, Carter. Sydney. Watch yourself, Crystal. I'm warning you. <laughs> All right, pick up that gun, Matty. Okay, got it, Nick. Material evidence in Crystal's trial for murder. Well, look. Six o'clock, Crystal. The hour's up, and I'm keeping my word. I'm dropping the case right now. Only I'm afraid it's too late to do you any good. Sure was a nice haul, Nick. <laughs> Secret Service is going to be mighty happy with that printing plant, to say nothing of the list of Crystal's customers. And you've solved your open and shut murder, Sergeant. Oh. Yes, Matty, with a pistol that killed the store detective and the evidence that Jeff and Dodie are prepared to give, you've got Crystal right where you want her, headed for the death house. <laughs> yeah, I guess we're all lucky you and Patsy decided to go shopping this morning, Nick. <laughs> all except Crystal. And Patsy. Why me? 
Well, you never did buy that birthday present for your mysterious Lucas. Nick, I bet you are jealous, goody. Now, I can tell you, I got the present already. Oh, but how? You didn't have time. I took one of those bull and bear games from Crystal's hideout. It'll be just right for Lucas. He's ten years old. <laughs> What about the adventure that new post-war old Dutch cleanser is going to bring us next week, Nick? Mike, we're going to meet an old lady in a wheelchair who refuses to be murdered. Well, I can understand why she might not approve of the idea. Not only that, Mike, she objected so violently that she joined Nick's staff long enough to catch the killer. Say, that's a new kind of detective, an old lady in a wheelchair. And it's a story I think you'll enjoy, Mike, about a murderer who discovered too late that he was his own victim. What do you call the adventure, Nick? I call it The Case of the Wrong Mr. Wright. Nick Carter, Master Detective, is presented each week at this time by the Cudahy Packing Company. It is produced and directed by Jock McGregor and is copyrighted by Street and Smith Publications, Incorporated. Charlotte plays Patsy, Ed Latimer plays Matty. Today's script was written by Alfred Bester. Original music is played by Henry Silverne. This program is fictional, and any resemblance to actual persons, living or dead, is purely coincidental. Friends... In every community chest city, nearly half the families benefit from Red Feather Aid. This year, however, these services cost more. Hence, there must be more and greater contributions. What's more, the USO is back, and community chest gifts must also cover it. We urge you, therefore, to give generously to the community chest in your city. One contribution is a gift to all the services in your community. Remember, everybody benefits, everybody gives. This is Michael Fitzmaurice saying, when minutes count... Use new post-war old Dutch cleanser.